Uh, hi everyone. Uh, I'm very glad to share our work on empirical security analysis of Google Workspace. I'm currently a third year PhD student in University of Queensland, UQ. And if you are interested in this topic, we have further follow-up works in this area. So before we continue, we must define what's the definition of business collaboration platforms. Have you ever used uh, Google Workspace or Microsoft Office? I think majority of you will use. So we take the Google Workspace as an example. It has 3 billion users, and uh, the second one is uh, Microsoft Office. It has over uh, 1.2 billion users. And for the native applications like the Google Doc, Google Gmail, Google Slide, we will call it as the host application because it's developed by Google and it's trusted. But Google also supports the other third-party applications and it's named Idon. So these third-party applications are developed by third-party developers and maybe not so trusted. Here are several examples. So using these third-party applications, you can edit your mathematic equations insert free images into your slide, and even translate selected content, all without leaving your current adding Google Doc or Gmail, and even synthesize your email attachment to other services like Dropbox. And this actually introduced two research questions. What if the uh, items are malicious? So can BCP still enforce their security currently? If we, if we want to, we want to understand these two research questions, we must to get familiar with the access control of items. So here is one example. You can see that it, uh, here is the BCP BCP user. When the user want to interact with the Google through their mobile or through their web browser, then the Google will interact with the server through their native API calls, maybe the Gmail, Google Doc, or Google Slide. Further, the Google server can communicate with the add-on. Here we take the Dropbox as an example. So he, uh, Google server can communicate with add-on through the add-on applications. And uh, for this example, like Google, user want to use the add-on to upload the Google uh, Gmail attachment to Dropbox without leaving current add-in Gmail. In the traditional mass knowledge, the user must have to download the attachment to his computer uh, then upload the attachment to Dropbox. So by using the add-ons, user, can, uh, user cannot leave the Gmail and upload the attachment to Dropbox server using the communication happened between Google server and add-on servers. And uh, what's our definition of threat model? So what if the users are malicious? Can user play more beyond his user role? Like if a viewer of the Google Doc can actually edit or comment the Google Doc, this is absolutely a permission escalation. And the second is that what if the malicious, the add on malicious, can add on do more beyond its guaranteed permission or do more beyond its guaranteed BCP resources? We have identified three challenges in our work. And the first challenge is that uh, currently uh, there is no specific uh, documentation or descriptions of the permission models. And we do our empirical analysis to understand uh, the current access control enforced by BCP. Uh, this is one example that uh, the APIs BCP can use. BCP can use this API to help the user create a Google Doc. And in order to utilize this API, the add-on must assess, obtain the authorization from the users. Here is the author, authorization scope. And uh, this scope are defined in the OAuth permissions. And uh, if user want to use this add-on, he must gain this authorization before the installation. What's, that? What's beyond? We know that uh, the owner can share his Google Doc with others. So during the actual running of the add-on, besides the obtain the permission from the user, Google also must need to check whether this current user has a permission to edit the current doc. So if I am the owner and I want to call this create API, it will be successful. But what if I'm not an owner, I'm only a viewer or a commenter, can I? And second challenge is that currently all the BCP ecosystem, including its native application and its add-ons are um, closed sourced. So we apply many efforts to interact all the communications from user side, assuming different user rules. 
like we take the viewer edit comment to interact with the results and see what's the difference. Uh, for the third challenge is that actually uh, we know that Google Workspace provides very rich functionality and the complex data flows. So for the cross, uh, we investigate the cross user, like whether owner can share his file, can revoke the sharing setting, and can change the current sharing settings. Also for the cross application flows, here is one example. So user, the data flow can actually flow from the spreadsheet to Gmail using this item, send the email, Gmail notification whenever anyone uploads certain cells in the spreadsheet. And in this cross application, uh, data flow that the BCP can still enforce the security. We have identified three vulnerabilities in the current access control of the BCP, and we will talk it in detail later. So the first one is the uh, access metadata consumment attack. We know that uh, in the general mode, when users want to access the results here, uh, the results may contain some hidden information that this user cannot see. Like if the user is not the owner and only the viewer or editor, he cannot see some hidden data of the results through the uh, mobile, bro mobile or browser and the host call. By utilizing the add-on, actually these hidden data are fetched by the user, and which means that uh, the current access control under the user mode and the add-on mode are inconsistency, and the user can utilize this vulnerability to access some hidden data. Uh, we have reviewed the three uh, four types of hidden data, like the, your collaborator information, uh, your Google chat or channel source, your upper upper folder structure and even your resource name by utilizing this uh, vulnerability. Uh, if we, uh, we take this example, I'm only the viewer of this documentation, and actually I cannot click this button, which is a version history, and see the details of this version history. By utilizing the add-on, we can achieve this. <laughs> and for the second attack is the uh, app to app control hijacking attack. So we know for different add-ons, maybe this is a uh, Broader add-on and this is your online banking add-on. They are specific to their own access control, which means they can only access the data granted to them. So maybe for the broader, they can only see the users that under broader's control. Where for the online banking, they can only see the resources that under the control of online banking. But we find that uh, the current design flow actually allows the broader application, broader add-on to access your online banking add-on. That's quite dangerous, and what's more, not only access, but uh, the broader add-on can even delete, modify your source code of your online banking add-on, and even access the data under the control of your online banking add-on. So this will cause severe impact when this vulnerability is manipulated. And uh, for the second types of uh, vulnerability, we will call it the access control attack. It can be divided into two types. The first is the cross application. If the third so party I don't want to upload the sensitive uh, information like upload our spreadsheet into the third party, it must gain our permission beforehand, which is uh, connect to external service. And we find that actually the email can service the attack vector and still send the, the like the uh, spreadsheet information to our add-on control the server without requiring the correct permission connect to external service. Uh, further, we know that uh, as, a, as a user of Google Doc, the owner can share his results with others. But do you know that your add-on can actually kick off your collaborators? So we take this case, uh, I am the owner and uh, maybe the other one are my collaborators. So I invited um, my collaborators and my collaborators will kick off by the add-on. But this add-on is not installed by me or installed by the collaborators. So which means that the, the, third, the third person can kick you, can kick you off without the approval of its owner and without the awareness of the collaborators. And uh, because the sharing is the most basic feature of uh, BCP, so uh, this stop sharing attack will hinder the basic sharing feature of BCP. As we all know, the web conference poster template is shared through Google Drive or Google Doc, right? 
Uh, we also analyze the potential um, prevalence in the current public market store. So we crowd around uh, um, five, uh, five, so, 5,000 public accessible items. But due to the nature of closed sourced items, so we are unable to um, get a source code. So we do an analysis of whether the current item has the pre-request permission to potential potentially launch this attack. We want to clarify that this doesn't mean these items are malicious, but it has already gained enough permissions to launch these attacks. We found that uh, for the first type and the third type attacks, there are around 70% uh, items has the potential to launch this attack. And for the most severe, which is the app to app control hijacking attack, still around uh, 700 items have the capacity to launch this attack. So what's our suggestion to Google or Microsoft Office since it's used by a large portion of users? First is that we encourage our final group, final group in the scoop. Um, currently for the view resource, the users are divided into further fan group like view resource content or view resource collaborators, but add-on are in a more cost green scoop. Add-on can view them all. Even users are in the more fan green scoop. And the second is that um, we encourage the BCP to enforce the tracking data flow to see if the resource are always flowing to specific uh, third-party ap applications. That means that this item may be malicious. And for the um, dynamic execution part, currently user can delegate some task to the item and item perform actions on behalf of user. But what if this this line is missing? The user doesn't issue any command to the item and item perform some dangerous action arbitrarily. So we encourage the explicit user confirmation in this situation. And the last one is that it's better to track in the ownership of the action, whether this action is launched by a real user or launched by our add-on. Because considering the sharing or kick of your collaborators, when it's launched by apps or add-ons, it may be a malicious behavior. So for the takeaway, uh, the severe these severe vulnerabilities can cause um, severe impact when they are manipulated, and uh, we encourage the more fingering the implementation for the BCPs. And also, um, currently BCP doesn't require the post writing code uh, for the code updating, which means that uh, for benign down, it can turn malicious afterwards. And we encourage BCP to enforce at least uh, the code analysis or scanning for the post writing update. So thank you, and I'm ready for answering your question. <laughs>